Hi guys, thank you for joining us and welcome to another episode of Rossini and Co. Driving in Italy has been one of the things we have enjoyed the most during our time here. Being able to just decide in the spur of the moment where to go, knowing that almost any choice is the right choice, has been a dream come true for Aiden and I. Since we have been here, we have had rental cars for many months, which was a very expensive exercise. I had already made a video about it and I will link it on the description. But for the last four to five months, we have had our own car. Having our own car has given us so much freedom as we purchase precisely the type of car that fits our needs. We live in a hilltop town, so we needed to consider that. And considering that we have a large dog and a cat that needs to travel in the crate, we needed to be kind of picky with what we were buying. Holy! You're nice and comfortable there. You have your blankets. You have a nice view. It has been a blessing and in a way a luxury to be able to look at the weather, check accommodation online, book it, pack and drive to discover a new place. For example, we don't really celebrate birthdays much, but we wanted to celebrate my first birthday in Italy by going somewhere. So I chose Lecce in Puglia, where I hadn't been before, and it didn't take long at all to arrange a trip and leave the house. In a short few days, we visited Lecce, Galatina, Gallipoli, and on the way back home to Molise, we stopped for lunch and coffee at Bari. By the way, the highlight of that trip was actually an impromptu visit to Bari for a few hours, not actually being in Lecce itself, but I think that will be a story for another video. Please stick with me, I promise you I'm going somewhere with all this. 
I just wanted to give you an idea of how great it is to have your own transportation. As some people have asked me if I think it will be useful or handy to have a car when they move to Italy. If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Being able to drive around, however, hasn't all been fun and games. Driving in a new country with a language that is not our own, in unfamiliar places, has become kind of a stress trigger for us, particularly when we leave our region. Within four months of purchasing our car, we have been fined four times. Oh, man! Which is crazy for us because we hardly ever received any fines in Australia. I admit it. One of the fines was fair, the other one we appealed, but the other two were still pulling our hair out over trying to understand how they happened. When you get a fine, it is usually in the mail. From the moment you receive it, you have five days to pay for it in order to get a small discount. If you're at home, the mailman gives it to you and requests a signature. If you're not home, you will be left a long docket to go to the post office and collect it. From personal experience, testing a fine is not very straightforward and based on the letter we received from our last fine, we actually needed to go to the comune of that town, which will be way more expensive than paying the actual fine. Our first fine arrived from the Comune of Fiumicino about three months after the fact. We took my family back to the airport and overstayed in the drop-off area by about 10 minutes. Being around 3 in the morning and since it was very quiet, we thought that wouldn't be a problem. And since my brother has he, had his cat traveling with him as well, it took us longer than usual to leave the area. I know this was our fault, the signs were very clear. The second fine also arrived three months later, this time from the Comune of Bari. To be honest, we still don't understand what the reason for this was. Even our friend who is a policeman could not explain what this was. We looked at the street signs, the times were right, there were other cars parked there, so I can't say much more about this. Since we received this fine, we decided we will take lots of pictures of the parking space itself, the signs and the surrounding area before we leave the car in case we may need them later. The third fine came from the Comune of Galatina. This fine really wiped this smile off my face. This was the quickest fine to arrive, about one and a half months later. Oh, Galatina, Galatina. This time we were fined for driving into a historical area. In our defense, we were following the parking signs that we saw in the area where we were in. It was a Sunday and it said that you could park from X time to X time. So we didn't give any thoughts as to whether we could park there or not. On the paperwork of this fine, it said that to appeal, we needed to go to the council of Galatina and obtain the documentation they had available there of our offense. Which, of course, we weren't going to do. It would be just too expensive and time consuming. Well, we knew we had driven to Galatina and we had parked, for sure. But what we didn't know was that apparently we had driven into the historical area. To be honest, there were areas of Galatina that looked a lot older and more historical than the area we parked in. There were white roads, new buildings, greenery, 
so we will never have thought this area was historical at all. Since then, we did some research and found an awesome tool, which for sure we will use in the future and we share with you right after we discuss the next find. In the meantime, this is the sign to watch out for. So I for sure will save this image in my little brain. The fourth find was pretty bizarre. It came from the comune of Guardia Grele in Abruzzo. I say bizarre because we couldn't for the life of us remember when we had been to Guardia Grele with our own car. After looking through our calendars, we remembered we had taken our car back to the dealer in Manopelo Abruzzo that day for them to finish a few things they had promised upon our purchase. So it seems like the car was taken to Guardia Grele at some point? The letter stated that a police patrol car had scanned our number plate and that it hadn't found an active insurance for that number plate. Hmm. We realized later that this had to do with the fact that our insurance had made a mistake and had made a typo on the number plate on the insurance papers. Our insurance helped us solve this. Okay, so remember how on find number three, we apparently entered the historical center of Galatina? Well, there is a super useful website that gives you a map of a given historical center to help you avoid this kind of problem. Once you enter the name of the city or town, it produces a map that you can then screenshot. Cool, right? And not only does that, it also tells you where the closest parking is available. As I was finishing editing today's content, I came across this video I made in Galatina, on the corner of the area where we parked. The area where we parked is behind where I'm standing. See this sign? This is the sign I showed you before to be weary of in order to avoid entering a historical center. I just showed Aiden this video, and we both remember that we passed this sign by about 5 meters and then turned around as it seemed like the streets were too narrow for our car so we ended up parking elsewhere. It took us about 40 seconds to turn around. So what do you think? Cool, have we gotten out of this fine or do you think we deserve the full weight of the law? Let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching this video, we hope that you enjoyed it. As always, please let us know your thoughts in the comment section. Please consider watching this video, I'm sure you'll find it entertaining and informative. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Ciao!